Sun Group. We talked about the 2M breakup last week, and I put the links in the, for the agreements in the show notes. But do you actually know how to find all that yourself? I'm going to show you. Hi, welcome to By Land and By Sea, an attorney breaking down the week in supply chain, presented by the Maritime Professor, me. I'm Lauren Began, founder of the Maritime Professor and Squall Strategies, and I'm your favorite maritime attorney. Join me every week as we walk through both ocean transport and surface transport topics in the wild world of supply chain. As always, the guidance here is general for educational purposes only. It should not be construed to be legal advice, and there is no attorney-client privilege created by this video. If you need an attorney, contact an attorney. So before we get into the discussion of the day, let's go through my top three stories of the week. Uh, all right, well, we are still on rulemaking language watch. Um, we don't have any new language. Remember, um, the unreasonable refusal to deal or negotiate with respect to vessel space accommodations um, that closed up and was supposed to be finished by December 16th. Uh, the FMC received such great comments, um, I think it was over 80 comments on that, um, that they said, you know, we want to take another look at this. And, and you raised some great points, um, particularly about what does the, the business decision of, of export strategy mean. Um, so they are going to be re-releasing um, or releasing a supplemental notice of proposed rulemaking. So they're going to be releasing some new language. Um, they'd like to get your feedback on that. I'm on watch. I'm still watching to see where it is, uh, but it hasn't come out yet. So I'll be sure to let you know when, when they put that up. Uh, we're still waiting on um, the Federal Maritime Commission to close up their detention demurrage comment. Well, it is closed, um, but but pull that together in, in language that comes out. Um, next up will be final rule. I don't anticipate any time soon. They had 183, 84 uh, comments filed on that. So we're probably looking at, gosh, late March at the earliest, maybe April. Um, but yeah, they're, they're still combing through all of that. And we're actually still waiting on the... Um, unfair or unjustly discriminatory methods language as well. That's the third of the rulemakings that we're watching on that came out of Osra 2022. Um, no language on that yet, uh, but uh, I'll be watching for that too. All right, story number two. Did you see that the CEO of AP Molar Maris posted today that the FMC chairman, Dan Maffei, is visiting the Maris Danish headquarters? I'd love to see it. I love to see it when the commissioners go go abroad or, or go and meet with the carriers directly um, or, or when the carriers come to the FMC. Uh, you know, the more the carriers are communicating with the FMC, the more the FMC can hopefully guide the carriers to continue uh, moving in the right direction, right? And, and maybe help them to do, do the right thing. Um, you know, I, I truly don't think the carriers are bad guys. Um, I think the supply chain got wonky for sure. I mean, we all know that. Um, and the carriers were probably making some questionable, bad decisions um, with respect to detention, demerge charges, you know, maybe instead of offering free days when they probably should have. Um, but nobody knew what was really going on. And so the FMC has made it their mission, it is their mission, to correct that behavior um, and ensure the fair and efficient movement of goods for the benefit of the U.S. consumer, importer, and exporter. Right? What was happening was not the fair and efficient movement of goods. Um, perhaps a little profiteering, but, you know, it's, it's hard to exactly say without getting into case by case. But, you know, um, having, keeping this line, the lines of communication open is great. I fully support it. I think this is great. I think that they, you know, that carriers are, are working toward, um, trying to, to make sure that they, they keep those communication lines open and, and, you know, they, they kind of correct the things that had happened before. Um, you know, having a VOCC audit team isn't a bad thing either. I mean, that's what the FMC has. Um, but just to keep their fingers on the pulse of what the carriers are doing, you know, just in case. <laughs> All right, story number three. Uh, did you see that Greg Miller of Freight Waves put out an article this week, and he was illuminating the actual percentages of actual alliance capacity in the market? So simply stated, what does that mean? How much cargo movement is actually part of these so-called cartels that President Biden was so mad about a few years ago? And how much is just kept with the individual companies, right? I mean, I guess when we talk about alliances and how much percentage the alliances share, we're kind of talking about the company in total, and, and kind of the aggregate total of that as it works. But 
in reality, the carriers aren't sending all of their vessels to be part of the vessel share agreement. And so here's what Greg said in his article, basically that the top nine carriers control 83% of ca capacity. We've heard that a lot, right? The top three, uh, the top nine carriers are controlling 83% of capacity. So the top three alliances, though, this is the new information. The top three alliances only control 39%. So the top three alliances, which is arguably all these nine carriers, they only control 39% of the market share. So that actually lines up with why the FMC declined to jump in with two feet at the height of the anti-carrier movement. Uh, look, I said it before, even today, don't get me wrong, a lot of shippers lost a lot of money, and in a lot of cases, it was unnecessarily, probably. I mean, you know, it's, it, we're, we're still seeing some of the case law come out on this. Um, but I know this makes me feel a little bit better a kind of of the monopoly shares of the market share, right? I mean, so so carriers are providing this great service. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to move the goods without the carriers. Um, and the alliances collectively only make up 39% of market share globally. So what this means is that the carriers that are part of these vessel sharing agreements are reserving most of their fleet for their own use and only using a small portion to, to dedicate to these shared routes and shared vessels. I just found that really interesting. All right, so those are the three stories. We're moving quick today, but you know, we, it, some days are, are quicker days. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the day. So we've been talking a lot about alliances recently. Sure, there's a lot going on with alliances. And we did a mini refresher on alliances last week and their formations. Um, and last year, I did a, an Alliance 101 episode on by land and by sea. I encourage you to go back and check that episode out. Uh, alliances 101. Um, find that episode for a more complete picture of alliances and their structure and formation. Uh, but it occurred to me that perhaps finding that publicly available information may be difficult. I mean, the FMC website is fairly user-friendly, but you kind of have to know what you're looking for, right? So, so I'm going to walk you through it today. And so for my podcast listeners, I'm going to try to make this as user-friendly to audio only as I can. But you can always catch the video on my LinkedIn page or on my YouTube channel by Landed by Sea presented by the Maritime Professor. And just a quick note, this is something that I'm actually incorporating into my e-learning courses, this walking through the website. Um, I'm going to be walking through the FMC website to show you how to use it and how to find information. Helpful, right? <laughs> uh, that's partly why building those e-courses is taking so long. I, I kind of sit down to, to record and then I come up with new things that I want to add in. Um, at some point, I'm just going to, you know, say, all right, time, time to publish. <laughs> but for now, we're still building. Um, you know, I, I really just want these courses to be really helpful. Um, okay, so let's get into it. So if you're interested in seeing slot charter agreements or vessel sharing agreements or really the actual agreement um, of these alliances that we've talked so much about, here's how you do it. So let's walk through and show you. So here we have the FMC website. It's a great website. There's a lot of information here. If you go down uh, to the very bottom, you can actually get some of the in the newsroom as, as the, the news kind of the, the top releases as it comes out. But if you look at this databases and services section, that's where we're going to find the agreements. So the second item down. So if you have your cursor over databases and services, this pops up, you get the agreement library. Click on that. So once this comes up, here you have, you can already see space charter agreement, terminal agreements. We have all sorts of stuff happening here. So if you click over here on the right, you can use search filters. So if you were to type in Maersk, you're going to see, oops, let's do that again. So type in Maersk, oh, and you got to spell it right. You'll see that it auto populates. So I haven't clicked enter yet. I just typed in Maersk. So you'll see that it auto populates all of the agreements that are actually Maersk is a part of. So if you start to scroll down, you're going to see space charter, slot charter, ancillary agreements. I mean, you've got all sorts of agreements, right? This is going to be pretty interesting. Um, but if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see Maersk and MSC vessel sharing agreement. So that's what I was pulling from last week. So even though you clicked it, it doesn't auto come up. It just goes into the search. So you have to press apply. So then you here, once you press apply, here it is. This is the global vessel sharing agreement, the alliance. So here, Maersk MSC Vessel Sharing Agreement. We're going to click it. And here are all of the amendments and the agreement that is related to this 2M alliance. So to kind of start from square one, 
you click the first one, and auto populates the PDF. So once you have that PDF, you can scroll through and see all the terms and agreements that are in there. However, I wouldn't stop there. It's important to note that these are all amendments. And so to get the complete picture, you have the agreement, the originally filed agreement, which was filed in 2014 and approved October 2014. But make sure that you check through all the other agreements or the uh, amendments too. So you have an amendment that included some more countries and areas um, of the geographic scope. You have more geographic scope changing, um, changes Maersk entity that is party to the agreement. Um, amendment geographic scope. So, I mean, it's important to look through to make sure that nothing in here is significantly changing it. So you don't just rely on the first agreement filed and that's it because these amendments are really important to understand. So that's it. I mean, have fun, right? You can, you can scroll through and see all sorts of other agreements. Um, there's terminal agreements. There's um, all sorts of different agreements that you can really scroll through and find whatever you're looking for. Um, this is the FMC website. Like I said, this is the, the agreements library. Um, pretty simple. Um, and what a wealth of information. You can learn more about what terms of the agreements these alliances have. Uh, maybe, talk, maybe go find a little bit of information on the termination of the agreements. You'll see that 2M wasn't allowed under their terms, their own terms, to terminate the agreement before eight years post-formation. Um, so that was 2022. Right, so here we are in the first month of the first year that they can actually terminate in 2023, and so they did. That's partly why a lot of ocean shipping experts weren't too surprised that this happened when it did. Um, but you know, that's just part of it. Um, so have fun with this new info. Let me know what you find. Um, I'd, I'd love to see what, what you're able to uh, cruise through the agreements file, uh, the agreements library, library and find. Uh, as always, this guidance here is general and for educational purposes only. It should not be construed to be legal advice directly related to your matter. If you need an attorney, contact an attorney. But if you have specific legal questions, feel free to reach out to me at my legal company, Squall Strategies. Otherwise, for the non-legal questions, the e-learning, and general industry information and insights, come find me at The Maritime Professor. If you like these videos, let me know. Comment, like, and share. If you want to listen to these episodes on demand or if you missed any previous episodes, check out my podcast by Land and by Sea. If you prefer to see the video, they live on my YouTube page by Land and by Sea presented by The Maritime Professor. While you're at it, check out the website, maritimeprofessor.com. E-course is still building. We're going to cover these website navigations in there as well. Uh, so until next week, this is Lauren Began, The Maritime Professor, and you've just listened to By Land and by Sea. See you next time.